wanted to get a big, nice, dressy shoe, but instead you ended up with this little thing, I'm gonna show you how to make this thing fit your foot with the top 20 tips. And yes, I am joking, but I'll see what I can do, and these tips really do work. So, we're starting right now. So the tough part with small shoes like this is you're gonna get bunions, you're gonna get heel pain, you're gonna get blisters, you're gonna get hammer toes, you're gonna get a ton of issues. So let us know what types of foot problems you have that stop you from wearing your shoes and why do you have small shoes? Is it a nice dressy shoe with a pointy front that's the problem? I always find it's these pointy front shoes that do you in. So let us know in the comments, we wanna know. Reason number one is people do not fit their shoe properly. So I know this is kind of a cheater point, but fit your shoe properly. We make a great guide. The number one reason people don't fit their shoe properly is they fit it when their foot's not swollen and then their foot gets swollen. Make sure you fit at the end of the day because your foot can go up half a size to a full size when you're standing. And especially if you're ordering shoes online, make sure your foot's more swollen, not first thing in the morning. Number two, you want to fit the bigger foot. Sometimes your left foot's bigger than your right foot. That's normal. Always fit the bigger shoe and you can fill in the smaller shoe later. It's better to have a slightly bigger shoe than too small of a shoe. Not all shoes are made the same. So keep that in mind. Always go up half a shoe size to a full shoe size. Easier to get something like an orthotic for almost nothing or to stuff something in your shoe to take up more room. But click on our guide. We'll show you how to fit a shoe at home so you never run into this mistake again, but we're still showing you great tips how to get your shoe to fit properly. So number one for high heels and stuff, get some moisturizer. It doesn't have to be Vaseline, but most people have Vaseline available at home. Just take some, rub some on your heel or the blister spots, you're not gonna get as much rubbing. So that will let you squeeze into these fancy boots or cowboy boots. The next thing you can do is grab some deodorant rub some deodorant on the back of your heel right here. You'll slide in easier, there's less rubbing. You could do that for your bunions, for your hammer toes, if they're rubbing and you're not wearing socks. But the next thing is, get some thinner socks. So you have thin socks like this, so aerated, nice socks, and then you have thicker socks. Don't go with the thick socks. Get kind of those little socks that have almost no thickness to them. Get like a compression sock, or a compression running sock. Those are available in our links below. So there's some great socks and great shoes. So we give you our top 2020 list down in the notes for best socks, best shoes, go check those out. Another thing, instead of wearing socks, you can put this on your heel. It will stop your heel from rubbing and it'll stop your Achilles tendon from rubbing. If you have heel problems because your shoe's too tight, a little gel pad like this, again, down in our show notes. So shoe stretchers. Shoe stretchers are really good. There's two principles to shoe stretchers because you don't actually have to buy the shoe stretcher if you understand how they work. Number one, when you grab a leather shoe or a nice material shoe, kind of like a baseball glove, you wanna grab some oil that's friendly to the shoe. So you can use some petroleum jelly or some cocoa butter or something not organic that's not gonna make the shoe smell if you have that available at home. Or number two, you could moisten up and get the shoe wet. Some guides online tell you to wash your shoe or get a little bit of moisture on there and the material will stretch a little bit. I say be careful. I'm not advocating to wash your shoe or to get it wet because it could ruin material on especially the expensive shoes. Like if they're a hundred plus dollars, don't ruin the material. If it's like a running shoe, it'll probably dry up and you probably won't have a problem. But for like the $600, like Louis Vuittons or whatever people are wearing out there, don't ruin that material. But what a shoe stretcher does is it has adjustable parts. So a bunion, hammer toes, the heel region, it can stretch out nice expensive dress shoes or dressy shoes like this. So you put a little bit of moisture, a little bit of oil, and you let it sit for 24 hours overnight. I'm gonna show you a better way. Grab some of this, run it under some water. Just get it a little bit damp and stuff it into the shoe. Stuff it so it really expands the front of the shoe. So what you wanna do is pretend that this is a little bit damp, squeeze all the water out of it, and you just stuff it, especially in the front. See how the front's squeezing up right now? You take a little bit more now, 
and you stuff a little bit more in there, just like this, and look at how much the shoe's expanding in the front. If you keep stuffing it hard in there, you can see the shoe, if you leave that overnight, it's gonna stretch that material like five or 10%. You can even do that along the heel. So that's why shoes at the store usually have this kind of stuff stuffed in there so the shoe matches up well. So my one of my favorite ways is to moisten some newspaper that you get so the junk mail is useful for something and just stuff it in your shoe, leave it overnight, leave it for two nights. Another thing you can do is a hair dryer. Take a hair dryer and just wipe it along the back of the shoe or the front or the heels and now put your foot in there. Walk around for five to 10 minutes and your shoe, because it's now hot and warm, will expand a little bit. Don't ruin, again, don't do this with like $100 plus shoes where you could ruin the material. Be safe, but it does work for most shoes. If you don't wanna risk it with your shoe, just wear it for a little bit. You don't have to wear it for a work shift your first day. Wear it around the house for half an hour. Make sure you're not getting any blisters. If you wear it half an hour here and there, the shoe will expand and will feel better. Another tip is you can grab ice and put it in a Ziploc bag and stuff it in just like the newspaper, but I don't recommend that. The idea is the condensation kind of moistens up the material and makes it expand. But again, just get some wet newspaper, but lightly wet, damp, not even wet, just damp. If you have top of the foot that's too tight, skip the laces. So you don't have to fill in every lace. If your laces don't connect, just skip the lace holes or even just lace up the front. So just lacing up the front is all you need to do in some cases. It's an easy fix. Sometimes putting just the heel lift into the heel changes the angle of your foot so you fit better. Elastic laces, like lock laces, these are great because they make them more elastic and your foot can expand more. This is for people that have top of the foot tightness. This is the sped up version of how to fit your foot at home. A regular piece of paper doesn't work for me, so I'm gonna use a piece of cardboard. Just because the piece of paper is a little too small, unless you go diagonally for some people. Put all your weight on the floor because your foot flattens even more. You can see I'm resting on my other foot here, so I probably should stand on it a little bit more and the foot would be just a little bit wider, just a little bit. So I give it a little bit of extra juice. You always wanna be safe when ordering online. Your foot gets just a little bit wider during the day and just a little bit longer. And remember, everybody makes slightly different shoes, so it's always better to go a little bit bigger. So draw out your foot, measure it, it should be in inches if you're in America. Other countries such as Europe may use different sizing measurements, especially if you're in India or Europe and hello to our visitors from those countries. So give it a little bit of extra. See how I gave it a little bit of extra? Then go to a place like Zappos.com. They have great calculators, also a great shoe store. Check the links below for our favorite links to our favorite Zappos shoes. But measure it, use their guides, and you plug in your numbers for width and length, and you use the sizing charts, and you're in great shape with the numbers we gave you. Let us know if that helped, and leave a comment.